collection or was that just something that over time through the process of sales getting just beat down with no 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 and realizing that hey it, it the world doesn't end when someone says they, that they don't like something and that, that they're not interested mm-hmm. and that it's just move on to the next one what what did that look like for you that transition of getting over that fear of rejection i mean i would what it can we actually get over that fear or just realizing the faster <laughs> yeah. I get to the no, the yep. sooner I get to a yes. Exactly. And it's more realizing the world doesn't end. The world isn't fair. Yep. We are in control of everything, but we can control how we continue to move forward. So I can control how I take that rejection, process it, move it aside, move on. What's up, everybody? This is Tyler Harris, and I am your host of the Breadwinner Podcast. Today, we have a special guest in the house, and this is Mr. Ruben Rojas. I'm excited to have him on and introduce you guys to him. Uh, I'll give you a quick little just overview of Ruben, but I want to give him the time to uh, let everybody know who he is, where he's from, what he's working on, Uh, but born and raised in L.A., I believe, and uh, co-founder of Beautify Earth, incredible, incredible artist, but also a financial planner. So we'll go into that because those two usually don't go hand in hand. Um, but this guy's done some incredible work. I've seen this stuff for a while, the paintings in Paris, New York, L.A., Florida, Mississippi, Texas, all over the place. I think in a zoo, you're painting in a zoo now. And <laughs> so all kinds of stuff um, going on. But man... The message behind the art, I think, is what I really want to get into into this podcast. And you can probably tell if you're watching this on the vlog uh, by the painting behind him that it all has to do with love. And I think that that's probably the most important message that you can put out. So, uh, man, Ruben, I appreciate you being on the podcast. And uh, tell everybody who you are, where you're from, and what you're focused on right now. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, Ruben Rojas born and raised Los Angeles artist and uh, the the goal is really to inspire the world to see life through another lens and I use the urban canvas as my medium to be able to do that Uh, a lot of advertising if you've seen the billboards sometimes tell us that you know our boobs aren't big enough or our (laughs) tummy's not flat enough or we need to get a big old truck for satisfying whatever ego issues we have and I'm sitting there writing love or you are beautiful or be humble or just breathe and to realize like hey if we look into that versus what we're being told you know we should be satisfied with exactly where we are i love that man so let's just jump right into it so right there what you just said usually i've seen that people come to those conclusions to they've gotten to the level where you're at and putting out that message after having gone through a period of time where that wasn't the focus, right? Especially like the breathe and the enjoy the moment and live in the now usually comes from a period of time where you weren't living that way. So maybe talk about that. Maybe I'm wrong, but if that's the case, then uh, maybe talk about that for a little bit. No, no, you're totally right. And, uh, our life, what is it? It's a marathon, right? We like to think that it's a sprint. We're going to get to the finish line really quick. We go through ups and downs. We go through bad relationships, bad businesses, you know, drama from family, from friends and everything. It all leads us to some end game at the end of the day. And what's important is to learn from that. What's important is to look back and realize, okay, all of that played a role into who I am and what I'm doing right now. Hmm. And if we ignore all those failures or all those mistakes or all those times where we're like, you know what, I need to have the freshest jeans and the biggest rims and I need to have all the superficial stuff to fill whatever void I'm having played a role into then realizing I don't need any of that. (laughs) Um, And here we are. So yeah, I mean, I was in real estate for eight years, Okay, made a lot of money and went bankrupt. I was a total, victim even though being a victim is your choice to the bubble that happened out here um then that led me into financial advising and i built myself up from scratch and went through all of that and as you know you know there's a lot of uh, rejection in that and it's a very hard business and to be able to do that for nine years got me to another place so through all that there's been a lot of learning 
a lot of self-development and doesn't mean I'm anywhere near my end goal of, of where I'm going to be. And I still get into all my things and have all my issues. And, but now with some of the tools, you can snap out of it a little bit faster. If you breathe or shift or just kind of realize that, okay, I'm in my crap feeling zone. Yeah. How do I move out of it? I'm triggering that. So that's, it's such an important topic because I think reaching people that are in that pain right now or in that struggle right now, like that's one of my um, biggest missions in life is we usually only learn these things, like we said, in hindsight and to be able to reach those that are in it right now and to be able to reach them with that message of like, Hey, there's purpose for whatever struggle and whatever pain that you're going through right now. And the reality is that the blessing that's on the other side of it you have to become a different person to receive it. And you're in that process of becoming that person right now. And, and it's, mm-hmm. it's usually difficult because when you're talking to a person that's in the middle of it, they're like, yeah, well, screw you <laughs> because they're in it. You know, they're <laughs> yeah. like, you know, it's not, it's not going to take the gun out of my mouth. Right. Like it's, they're in it, mm-hmm. but to be able to just start chipping away uh, at that so that people understand that, Hey, what I'm going through sucks right now, but it's growing me into a, person that can receive all these blessings on the other side. And for me, that was my story in hindsight in knowing that, man, I'm so grateful for all that just crap that I went through because it made me to the person that I am today, the father, the husband, the business person. Um, so I'm so grateful for those things. Uh, but I think it's important to reach those people when they're in it. And that's what, what I, that's just what I, my quest right now is to try to figure out how to relay that message to those. And I think it's interesting. You're reaching them on a much higher level because you're reaching them through art. And especially with, with the street art, you're reaching them in people that are just driving down the road and they may be in the middle of it, but then they look to the left and they do see this mural that says love or, or, or breathe and these things. And you're able to just plant those seeds throughout someone's random, just, throughout their day, getting those little seeds planted that start those conversations, right? I mean, I'm assuming that that's kind of the thought. Yes. My passion's always been around people, which has led to what I'm doing now with art because I'm speaking to myself, but I'm also being a vessel and speaking Mm -hmm. to people. And hopefully, you know, I can inspire them to go and do whatever it is that they want to do and follow their dreams. And if my art is a catalyst to doing that and go forth and conquer, so to speak. But uh, purpose is a different thing because then yep. what's my purpose? What's yep. my purpose? Oh, my mentor's saying that I have to be X, Y, Z kind of financial advisor. But is that my purpose or is it my purpose to serve the maximum amount of people? Mm-hmm. So being in service using this nonprofit that, that we have now, Beautify Earth, has allowed me to be in service for that. Mm-hmm. Then I get involved with other charities and other things and I've realized that being in service then helps me in finding my purpose. Got it. And then that tied back to the passion of people. So I've been passionate for people and then I have purpose in supporting people and finding whatever it is that I can help them find to make them better people. If that makes sense. It does make sense. And, and I think, man, it seems like such an interesting dynamic for you. The disadvantage, the majority of artists that don't have a sales background is devastating. <laughs> I'm just thinking of, of just that dynamic of, you know, you, you have creators and, and artists that don't have the business savvy or don't, can't have the sales conversations or just any type of transactional, uh, conversation that is in the, enables them to be able to get their creation or whatever that may be, their art out there. Um, mm. and, it's such a, that seems like such a perfect fit for someone that has the sales background, that has the sales skills, that has also the other key element, which is the people skills to be able to actually translate those sales into building relationships and making connections. And then to be able to take that art and now effectively get it out there because you know how to talk to people, you know how to close deals Uh, but you know how to connect with others. And and to me, that's the interesting thing with collaborations. And that's kind of what I want to close with is I know that's got to be a huge thing in in you getting your message out there. And so I see you doing things with hats and, and doing different 
pieces of art for so the way the way I found you was through Lewis Howe's podcast. That's the way I I first became known of your name. Uh, I saw your your mural um, there in his uh, studio. And those type of collaborations and just getting this message out there and getting the awareness out there has to be huge. So maybe talk about that a little bit and those collaborations with different, whether it be organizations or whether it be individuals and how that's progressed with social media uh, to get your name out there and ultimately get your message out there. No, that's a good point. So having the business background is huge. Yeah. Uh, some of my board members at Beautify Air, they one owns a operation, a software company. Another mm-hmm. one's an architect. Other people have done different things here and there that had brought a lot to the table. Having that business sense and having that business savvy, or just the experience of a lot of rejection. Yeah. Um, being an artist, I believe, in my experience, and I can only speak to myself, is when you have short-sighted vision and you want the quick dollar you're not going to be able to make the impact that you want to eventually create. You've got to look at these collaborations for the long term. Of, um, what does this do down the line? Yep. What does this investment in myself, in this piece of art, in the time I put here for supplies and this and that lead to down the line? Yep. Where's that going to go? So having that long term vision, I think, is the biggest thing. The next thing is just the experience of that is, you know, I'm not afraid to talk to a business owner or a landlord yep. or a decision maker or walk into a board room and present what I want to do on this huge wall where 20 people have to make the decision. And coming from the position of the mission of the nonprofit, the mission of the work, not from this is what I want to paint on the wall and be very much stuck on that also. So just having that balance. Absolutely. And you, you've mentioned that word rejection a couple of times. And so it seems like that's like a hot point for you. And as I'm thinking through that, as you were talking, overcoming objection and just dealing with objection in the business world in sales is one of the biggest things that people can never get up, get, never get over. And so that's why they fail in like a sales career or as a financial planner. But I can't think of anything more difficult when it comes to rejection than when you have worked on a piece of art for a period of time and you've invested and you've put your soul into it and that fear of rejection coming back from the person that ultimately receives this piece of art that you have poured into over hours and hours and hours. And that's why I think there's probably so much art that just hasn't seen the light of day because of that fear that the general public or the person that it was created for would have that sense of, of, of rejection coming from that. And so you've mentioned it a couple of different times. And so was that something that was natural to you, that fear of rejection or was that, uh, uh, that overcoming that fear of rejection or was that just something that over time through the process of sales, getting just beat down with no, 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 no. And realizing that, Hey, it, it the world doesn't end when someone says they, that they don't like something and that, that they're not interested mm-hmm. and that it's just move on to the next one. What, what did that look like for you? That transition of getting over that fear of rejection? I mean, I w- I would it, can we actually get over that fear or just realizing <laughs> the faster yeah. I get to the no, the yep. sooner I get to a yes. Exactly. And it's more realizing the world doesn't end. The world isn't fair. Yeah. We aren't in control of everything, but we can control how we continue to move forward. So I can control how I take that rejection, process it, move it aside, move on. So what I've learned now is try to focus on what's controllable versus to focusing on all these things are out of our control because those are the things that hurt us the most. Yep. And then realize, okay, well, we can't control the rejection. We can only say, hey, thank you, and move on and go forward um, and get to that next yes. It's part of life. And yep. also, they come back. If you've done it long enough, you realize a lot of these people come back to you, maybe in six months, maybe in a year, maybe three years, maybe in a week. Yep. Um. You know, that's the best way of doing that. But you, you said something else earlier. I remember uh, sometimes when I get commission pieces, I'll paint them and then I look at them and I'm like, no. And I even just say no and I'll start yeah. over. Yeah. 
So that, that's, you know, having that opportunity to be able to start over also is important and realizing I can control starting over. That's interesting. Man, the last question I want to ask before I, I um, tell everybody where they can find you is take a piece like like what you're sitting in front of right now. When you're looking at this, how do you know when you're done? That's just, that's my only question. So we got love written on here a million times, but like the mm-hmm. last time that you put that last red L O V E and you looked at it and you went, "That's it, I'm I'm done." Like, how do you know when you're done? Uh. <laughs> I, first, I say art's never really complete because oh, you can man, sit there and what's the next evolution. That's such, that's such a deep answer. <laughs> <laughs> what's the next evolution? But uh, <laughs> you said you said a key thing that red love. I actually finish all the pieces that are in color with red. It's my final mm-hmm. color. It's what I put on top. That the way I visually take it in, I feel like it gives it depth and it seals it. Hmm. So I'll look at how it's dispersed, the density. And I mean, I look at the evolution of the work over the past four years, how I've written it from all capitals, from lower cases, from density, small, large, this, that, on different colors, no colors. Um, But yeah, ultimately, it's really done, maybe for the moment. Yeah. That's so interesting that you just said you always end in red. I would love to sit here and claim that I just have such a keen eye to, to art because I literally just looked behind you and I went, um, so that last red one, when you ended with the red, that's yeah. so funny that you said you always end in red. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, man, t- tell everybody where they can find you online. Uh, RubenRojas.com website, Instagram at Ruben Rojas. Facebook at Ruben Rojas. Basically, everything's at Ruben Rojas. R U B E N R O J A S. R U B E N R O J A S. Well, man, I appreciate you taking uh, the time on a Friday to jump on here. Um, I absolutely love uh, what you're doing, and I just love uh, the message behind it. And one of my goals when I started this podcast was I wanted to find people that were 100% not only operating out of a purpose, out of passion, but operating out of their gifts. And I think that's most important is that you're able to, between all the different things that you're doing, truly operate out of what you're gifted in. And that ultimately is what's going to lead to fulfillment. So man, I am so happy to have you on here and I really, really appreciate your time. And uh, with that guys, that is the breadwinner podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris, and we will see you next time. What's up, guys? If you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page. Then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down. And when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we want to have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first and we'll see you next time.